write it down. Write, not a question, but I'm going to give you an equation first. And after the equation, I start the question. DP plus HE is equal to SS. Are we there together? OK. DP plus HE, don't have a pen, is equal to SS. That is the first equation. Let me go to the second equation. The second equation will be when P, when P, P, the, word, the letter P, yeah. When P meets O. When P meets O. Is equal to S. Equal to S. Have you got that? So the first point, let me take it from a very profound. This is a woman who probably have worshipped God more and better than most of us. Her name is called Ellen Jean White, and this is the quotation she put. On this very topic that we are treating, it is so profound. Because she says it in this way. God will not send angels from heaven to come to this earth to accomplish what you and I have to get up and do. And she ended that quotation with what I've just given you as a formula. For you to succeed, and that SS is secret of success, is the union of two things. Divine power plus human effort. That is how she put it. The second equation I give to you is my own. And this is how it goes. It says when preparation meets opportunity, success is inevitable. If you put the equation together, preparation is adequate. It is also true that God do not call people who are qualified. But he never failed to qualify them when he called them. Game Pass, institution of higher learning, have taken it upon themselves for us to do this work. It's a preparation process. So today the topic is going to look at preparation process. Level 100, you are so fortunate. Fortunate 100, I will call you. Because you see... It gives you what it takes for you to groom yourself and never slip and fall where somebody has fallen before. Because it wouldn't work. And that is exactly why we're here. So I'm going to put this, and I just want your concentration. Have a look at this. I'll read it quickly for you. Think it through now. Shown above, you can see the pictures, are four men who are waiting to be killed executed. They cannot move. They can only look forward. Between A and B, you can look at the pictures very carefully, there is a brick wall. So it means you can't see through. It's opaque. They all know that between them, they are wearing four hearts. Two of the hearts are black and two white. But they do not know the color of the heart they themselves are wearing. And they cannot see their own heart color. In order to avoid being shot, one of them must call out the color of the hat he is wearing. If the person gets it wrong, everybody gets shot. Of course, if the person gets it right, everybody is saved. They were given 10 minutes to phantom this out. One minute just after. One of them said, I know for certainty the color of the hat I'm wearing. Would that be Mr. A for you? Would that be Mr. B? Would it be Mr. C? Or to you, Mr. D? Who can help us quickly? Anyone? See any hand there? Ah. Who want to give you a guess? Sit, sit like a student. Thank you. With a purpose. That helps. Where's the hand? Let's go quickly. Guys, you know, okay, you can cut. So, yeah. Who is going? Who is giving it a try? Nobody's going to beat you, so let's go. Let's go. 
Again, part of the thing we're going to go through is a disaster for you to sit in a class without making an attempt to ask questions for any lecture. It's danger. Yes, bro. D. Okay, good. How many of you agree it should be D? Yes. It, it looks like it's D, right? And I like that because your interpretation will be D can see two people in front, right? So he has the benefit of seeing Mr. C and Mr. B. Excellent. But then again, when he look forward, he see one black, one white. So he's also confused. Don't you think so? It would have been 100% certainty if he looked forward between the two and the two of them are wearing the same color. Are we together? But this is where one white, one black. What are the chances that he's the one wearing the other black or the other white? Difficult to tell. Anybody want to give it a try? Who else then? Yes, please. C. What's your reason for that? C is wearing black. Yes, it's true. You can see white. That, 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 logically, I don't, I don't see how you conclude it like that. Yeah. You can see white. There's two colors. You could be wearing the other white. Mm -hmm. No, you are thinking what you call dummy dummy. Because this is black, the next one should be white. This is black, it should be white. But you see, this is life and death moment. But you've made a good attempt though. Your justification, and this is very critical, the justification is what makes a difference. Your reasons behind your answer, are we together on that point? That is what is so important. And everything I'm doing for a start, simply, you cannot miss the best and catch up with the pace. It's not possible. Many graduates and a number of them have missed the base, and now everybody is struggling to catch up with what? The pace. It won't work like that. That's why I believe, and I, I really applaud Gimpa for this, because you see, it is important that we actually seriously make sure we embrace the base and get it right so that we can survive in the competition ahead. Number of universities in Ghana, number of graduates every year, compared that to amount of people who get a job, is a serious issue. So I'll put it this way. Looking for a job in this century is the same as a full-time job itself. When you're even looking for one, it doesn't happen just by accident. You need to make deliberate attempt. So let's conclude that. The answer is Mr. C. He's right, but his justification is wrong. And as a lecturer, when you actually do that, then of course you are wrong, right? It's C. Why? C had all the confidence to say, I know the color of their heart because of the silence of Mr. D. Think along with me. The one who's supposed to speak should have been what? D. Because D is the one who can see two people. But D is not talking simply because when he look, he's confused. Because he can see that there's a black and there's a white. But he wouldn't know which one he is wearing at the back there. So he did not talk. So within a few seconds, when the person who have the benefit and opportunity of seeing the two did not speak, it got Mr. C to be very certain 100% that I'm wearing black. So the answer is Mr. C. This is a logical thinking thing. This is the kind of thinking you must have from level 100 if you want to succeed in life, unfortunately. <laughs> Deep, beyond average, excel and move yourself onto the highest level that you can get to. So now, the question, what are employers looking for? Because if we're able to understand that, it will really help us to be able to agree that if employers are looking, then of course, we also need to prepare ourselves. And how do we prepare ourselves? Okay? How do we prepare ourselves? And part of that preparation, let's look at a few things. If 
if you look at this very carefully, you will notice that every day employers receive CV, which is applications from people, but they take time to select. Because if they get it wrong, it affects their profit. And you can hear comment when people say that taking a graduate to work for you now, you literally have to babysit them. So most employers out there, for a fact, sometimes and many times, are even skeptical when it comes to employing a graduate these days. Because if you take those from the senior high school, you pay them less, they do the job. They will still ask you, you explain it, it's better. They wouldn't mind taking 500, 400 sometimes. A graduate walk to you, he's actually looking to get about 1,000, 800 maybe. Since national service will give you about 600 in a range. So if, you, if you're employing me, pay me, whether it's a contract or not. So people, that is the thing. But employers also feel that, look, the reason why I need to take somebody is that for the person to carry a tax, the person should be able to come to me because it's a value the person has placed on themselves for four good years in academic institutions. And this person worked to me for me to employ and pay the person. What am I paying for? And that is why critical question at a job interview, when you actually ask how much am I going to be paid, they also flip the question back to you and say, how much do you worth? What value do you bring to me? If you do not have much of a value, then obviously it is not going to happen. The employer is not going to smile. He's not going to look at you and say, look, because you are just different, I feel I'll pay you more. But you are what you think. So what is in your mind right now? We move on. How do you discover what you have to discover? So the employer says this. We have a specific things we look for. And these are things that we put together in order to employ one single person in the organization. And this one, Individuals who are multitasking. Some people can only do one thing at a time. At the University of Ohio, there are some who have chosen a course. Either they are law students, business students, and this is a business student, right? Most of you as business students have discipline. Either you're going for HR, marketing, which other courses are you doing here? Accounting and what? Information, banking, procurement. Some people, as soon as they actually take that as a route, they have no idea what happened in other department at all. They are so fixed and they are so boxed in. They are so programmed that they are destined to die with what they think they have to do. So if it's accounting, it's accounting. They have no idea what happened in any other department. What if the job you are looking for is definitely not straightforward accounting after first degree? How are you going to survive? So... Employer says we are looking for people who are multi-taxing individuals. Can you do and understand more than just one thing? Very, very critical for employers. Employer says not only that, we are also looking for people who can think on their feet. Can you think on your feet? There was a time where people say, let me go and sleep and think over things and I'll give you the response uh, tomorrow. Pillow give wisdom. Today I'm here to tell you, Pillow have stopped giving wisdom. The negativity that you go to bed with, you wake up and it has even doubled. This is a kind of century that you live in. So again, can you think on your feet? What I put up to you before we start is simply part of thinking on your feet. Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, Mr. D. Can you think on your feet? That's a request for employers. Individuals who have emotional intelligence. If you have ever lecture level 100 before, and, and I've done it, and I didn't like it that much, and I tell you for what, you could actually be talking to them when one person breaks up and starts crying. When you get closer, it could only be one thing. I did everything, and that guy said he has broken up with me. If it's a guy crying, it's likely that the lady has broken your heart. You know, you have all been there before. When you get to that level, no matter what the lecturer will say, hey, hey, hey. If somebody is waiting for you and you know what you're going to do is something that is so important to you, forget about what the lecturer is saying. You can't wait for him to finish. You know that thing about love that takes us? So again, emotional intelligence is look and aspect. If you live in this continent, it's not only emotional intelligence. It also talk about the cultural intelligence. Why people say you can't give left? If you are speaking with a microphone, 
use your right hand for illustration and let the microphone be on your left. This is the world we live in. When you can't talk to an adult, just pointing or putting your hand in your pocket, this is all part of the cultural intelligence, things that you embrace. When you can't go and talk to your lecturer just as you're talking to your colleagues, some wouldn't take it kindly to that. It's part of the cultural intelligence. We're grown up for us to believe that is it. And some of it we need to embrace it because it is part of what we need to be able to keep. It's important. So emotional intelligence. Do you get so emotional? You insult people before you think. You get angry when nobody has even upset you. You have issues and you feel you have the right to speak. So in a corporate environment, when you think you are going through your menstrual rituals, most of the ladies have your menses. So for you, the whole office will shut down because you are in pain. So that day, nobody talks to you because you are moody. And when the four or five days and seven days are gone, then you want to smile to people. People won't smile to you. This is what we call emotional intelligence. So to put it quite simple, in a corporate environment, when there's a pain in between your legs, you still sit down and still put your foot tight enough. When you feel the pain, how are you doing? <laughs> you speak, the person has no idea. You manage a smile because that is what gets business go bad. And the whole organization is going to stop because of that. Do you have emotional intelligence? Do you cry over everything and little things? Everything is a World Cup to you. Everything is big. You are, a guy says he doesn't like you, so your, your love is dead for the rest of your life. I see he's the only one. Oh, he made for me. Especially when he broke your virginity. I know that. He said, oh, come on. He's the only one. God, God, were you there when God was putting the two of you together? When your body is ready for sex, but to be honest with you, you are not ready for marriage. Most of you dating for four or five years, most of you, most of you having boyfriend, girlfriend, trust me, call it a fan because you're not serious. You don't even know marriage. <laughs> and if somebody is having fun with you, then you also have to be careful. And that is why you need to be very economical. So emotional intelligence, can you carry yourself though you are not married, but you are doing things that married people do, then of course you need to be asking a lot of questions. Very important. Can we have some quietness here, please? Very important. So again and again and again, do not let somebody who have no idea where they are going take you along because the two of you are going to ditch. It wouldn't help. Emotional intelligence. Will you deal with issue as it comes? It's very important. And to many, your parents know you differently. And that is a fact. And I've seen people level 100 Post no two, lead their end time and secure is just an order of the day. Why? They are doing it for the guy, so the guy will be happy. Once again, remember, your body is ready for sex, but you are not ready for marriage. And if that person you are with, more or less, excuse my friend, is chopping you even twice a month, he will chop you for a very long time. It is a trouble while you find yourself. You don't sacrifice any life for any guy out there because it's not necessary. Good things and opportunity will come. And your single life is a preparation towards your marriage life. Remember that. And if somebody messes up or you mess yourself up in your single life, trust me, it will affect your married life. And the person you are dating right now, probably having sex or not, with, that person will end up being somebody's wife or somebody's husband. So be careful how many parts of yourself that you put into it. The rest of you can agree with me. If you have gone out to one or two people before, you know for sure. Sometimes you see some of them and you ask yourself, oh gosh. Why did that? What happened? I like how you put it. What, what was I thinking? This guy, seriously, and some few months back, when this guy is approaching, trust me, uh, he's coming over. You feel like something within the bones. You know, you've been there before. We, we, you would. And this I concluded by saying, if you cannot also forget about your ex, you can never have your next. Some people have to come and mess you up and go. And that is why when you are in a relationship, when you are not ready for marriage, you've got to be careful how much you put into it. At the moment, you can't take it serious. If you can abstain, that is the 100% part I recommend for everybody. If abstinence is your issue, stop taking any contraception, especially the emergency contraception that will end up killing you. And maybe economically, use condom. That God will still forgive you but you are sure for sure. 
So again, emotional intelligence. How do you balance that off and be able to deal with the situation? When the money has not come from your parents and you need to feel like you want to cry, exams is due, you are not ready for the exam, can you still balance yourself emotionally for you to go and sit down and give your best positive image? When you are the only person who probably had a university from your house and you look like you think you are the champion because you only compare yourself to your family members, question, do you have what it takes for you to sustain and give yourself the best so that you become the best of all. Let's move on to what employers are looking for. Teamwork. Teamwork. Can you work with a team? Can you work with other people to be able to get results? Employers are key. And many a times, if you know, these are, oh, you have heard before, in a job interview, they ask you, have you ever had any experience at all? Apart from doing internship, which I'll talk about it for you to have these experiences. Remember, everything you do on campuses is also part of a team. Some people, when you're giving them a project work, and I love Grace and the other lecturers when you go to their classes, they have a way of really assigning you into a small group. And that small group have to work. But a report comes all the time. People can be part of the group. They bring nothing on the table. <laughs> they have time less for important things. Terrible. And there are some people you wish from the first day you wouldn't want to go to the same team with them. <laughs> in a corporate environment, trust me, that is exactly what happened in a corporate environment. Because in a corporate environment, you have to work with people that you don't like, number one. You have to also work with people that you know seriously. They are not bringing anything, but you still have to be able to work in a team. But you always love those people who come to the table with something. So teamwork is critical because when we are together, we are able to achieve greater things. When you are alone, what you achieve will not be as big as when you are together. So working together can waste time. Working together can be troubles, but the best way to go is collaboration. You work together for you to achieve a purpose and a goal. Okay? And then we move on from here. Organizations are looking for individuals who can follow instructions. You know the story of a little boy when the mom said, I'm going to send you. The guy ran and went to the shop and said, my mother said she's going to send me. But she didn't even tell me what, what, what is it that I'm buying. I don't even know why I'm here. And the woman said, you better go back to your mom. <laughs> Do you follow instructions right on this campus? Some of you have forgotten what you were told even on orientation. Do you follow instructions when you have issues with your lecturer? What is your right as a student? When you do not like certain things on campus, what is your right as a student? When you actually walk over here, what is it ahead of you that you need to look forward to? What is your preparation to the class before the lecturer even comes in? Can you follow instructions thoroughly and be able to achieve what the organization has set up to do? They have a mandate. Taking initiative is a key. Employers are looking for people who can take initiative. This generation lacks so much patriotism spirit that if things are falling, it will fall in front of them. A lecturer can come and struggle over here trying to look at a place to even connect the cable. The student comfortably is sitting down on the phone. What's happening? <laughs> I'm not the one who have asked you to come and teach you. Say. <laughs> a lecturer will come here sweating. You can tell that this is struggling. And somebody have a chill water, two of them in front of them. Open one. <laughs> okay, you... Say, when you get your pay, do you share with me? You are the one who said you can teach. Teach. We are here. We are here to listen. So again, people do not take initiative. And it's so very worrisome. It's troubling. Can you take initiative in a corporate environment? That is the organization rule. And that's what they're looking for. Communication. Very important. Effective communication. Very, very important. Very important. When people are talking to you, do you listen and pay attention? Are you able to get your message across? For somebody to be able to interpret that and action the results as a feedback for you. So communication, straight to the point. Or you are a person, when you're actually talking to people, you have too much issues and, 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 and your mouth is actually open, talking differently, and your mind is also saying differently. You yourself, who is saying, is more confused. How do you expect a person who is listening to you make sense out of it? It's not going to happen. Communication, effective communication. And the environment that you find yourself, there are people who are also a little timid. But corporate environment, they are looking for people who can initiate communication. That is what is so important. 
In the century that we find yourself, quite a lot of young people, when you even take them for a date, will not talk. It is only when you ask them, then they respond. So if you don't speak, nobody speak. The worst of it, we all take our phones and start WhatsApping other people who are not there. God have mercy. We live in a century that is a difficult time. Because you see, alcohol, cigarette, okay? Okay, weed, add weed to it. Because I know some of you pump it, right? Okay, good. Well, be careful of those things as well. Because, you know, so all these things, there's a restriction age. You can't buy alcohol until you're a certain age, right? You cannot also buy cigarette until you're at a certain age. What we do not have restriction for, the use of mobile phone online. It's about time maybe we think about it. Because I tell you the fact, the very hormones called dopamine is the hormones that give you excitement when you win a lottery. It's the whole same hormones that give you excitement when you take alcohol. And actually, when you actually smoke and you are high, the kind of feelings is what we call dopamine. It's the same hormones that drives you when you start receiving test message. And that is why when the test message really comes, many of them, until you take your phone to have a look at it, you are not comfortable. Not only that, it is also very key. You know, when you actually buy your phone, you're expecting people to call. If people don't send you messages, sometimes you are tempted to say, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> And when you send about 10, 20 highs, then people start responding. It make you feel, oh, yeah, yeah, I can. My day is right in. It's the same thing that drives into you. For you to smile and take a picture and post it there. Hey. But inside you, you know, in that, hmm, you are dying. It's dopamine. Communication. The very tool that is good for us can also be a stamping block for us to our sources instead of being a stepping stone for us to be effectively get our message across. So to those of you who spend a lot of time on your phones, not making sense and talking, please, it's about time you think about it and drop it. Because employers are not key about that and they don't want people who are like that. Let me move on to the next one. People skills. Employers are looking for people who knows how to make people people. Very key. People skills, your ability to relate to people. Out of many, one nation. That is the motto of Jamaica. Different colors. Here we come. When you come to Gimpa, there are so many. You see Ewe, you see Gan, you see Latte, you see Akan. You, different, 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 different. You see Nigerians, you see Avorians, you see Togolese. Oh, uh, uh, many, 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 many. Some you wouldn't like them. Some who speak the same languages. There are people, when they see you immediately, and I've spoken to you, there are some of you that I know, you need to work on your human relation. It's so bad. I guess sometimes it gets into people's mind that when you even meet them and talk to them, they feel that you're going to ask them out. And I've seen level 100. You see, I, I, I personally even look at level 100, right? Sometimes. So when people see you and you talk to them, it gets into their head. And when they realize that you are somebody, then they start paying attention. People are not interested in that, you know. You cannot have it all because you depend on other people. And I'll give you a definition of what I call a perfect level 100. Right now, when you even need a reference, you don't come to Gimpa Campus. You can stay home and call a lecturer and say, say please give me this reference. He will send it by email to you. That alone, it means there's something. Some will come and wait for weeks and pay money for it to be done. I don't know about Gempa. University of Ghana, you pay money. Here you pay. UCC, you pay money before they do it. You find it difficult to get it. No surprise. You know? So again, it's important to really have people. People skill, that is what matters. How do you sustain and be with people who are there? And I tell you, let me do it. If you build it this way, there are people at the base. So if it's three base system, what we're going to have is that, look, you actually will have people at the bottom. How many of you know the Maslow hierarchy? You see that, right? Yes, it's like a steps, right? The base, the base, the bigger base, it should be people who are above your level. They are the people you need most. So some of you need to go back and delete yourself from certain pages from primary school, secondary school. How far are you going? Have people from the higher level 
even at level 100. Get contact. Be with them at that higher level. Have them plenty of them. And when you move on, have people at your level as well. That is the second base. And the last base, have people who are less privileged and unfortunate there. Don't have many of them. Because if you are not standing on a perfect ground, somebody can easily pull you down. But when you learn from the people above in the bigger base, you share with the people at your level and you teach those below you. That is a life principle. How do you deal with human beings to make sure you get the best out of it? Are we together on that point? Because we are here on a purpose. So can you deal with human beings, the nature, some emotionally? One day they laugh. One day, they don't. Some people will talk on the phone with people. When you are talking to them, they are still on the phone. It's insulting. It's impolite. It's disrespectful. No matter how, excuse the person on the phone if it's possible and talk to the person in front of you. It's rude. So we carry on so many attitudes and you think you are there. One day, you will need one person to say something for you to be out. Right here, even at this institution. And that is why just respect Makes sense anywhere you go. Time management. Be conscious of your time. Can you manage yourself? One of the key principles of time management is what we call getting yourself organized. If you are not organized, I'm telling you, even when you sit down to study, you forget things and you need to rush and go and look for them. The time it will take you for you finding out where you actually read to the last, I'm telling you, time has gone. How effectively do you use your time? Many of you, even when you are studying, you still adapt the old traditional system of studies to the extent that you what? You chew the things, cramp them into your head, and you take a pen and paper and write it back and see if it's still there. Is that right? Is that what you have been doing ever since? How come none of you is researching a new method? Different way for impartation. Recently, as I just ended early, I said something and almost everybody was like, but it's so important, it's a key. Have you ever sat down to take your entire notes by a lecturer? Read the entire notes and put your phone there on a record and record it. When you finish, put your earpiece. Play it once. Play it the second time. When you are playing it the third time, I can tell you for a fact, your mind will say it before you hear your own voice. That is a guarantee. It's already in your head. When you sit in the exams room, I can tell you for a fact, you will be able to remember exactly where you were when you were listening to it. And you can write it and produce it as a lecturer wanted. Impartation. We can adapt a different method of getting things. Most of you are used to music. When we used to have cassettes, now we don't use cassettes anymore. But when you used to have CD, one of uh, what I call West Design, it didn't help us that much. There's a lot of scratches on the CD, right? When you actually have a scratch in a particular music, you see, when the music is playing and it gets to that particular point, you know it's getting there, right? Yeah. That is what is the power of this. The thing you carry, God has made a perfect design. The only fault is you. Nobody else. The lecturer is not good as you because you have what it takes. This 21st century, people will ask you what it is. I say, go and Google it first. And if you don't have understanding, come back. It helps. So again, again, you have enough information for you to work otherwise. So ability to communicate effectively, organizational skills, which I shared with you, proving ability to work as part of a team, good customer service skills, putting a smile. How do you respond to anger? When somebody doesn't really like you and the person show attitude, do you also reiterate? Or you sit back and compose yourself. Because the person who you see the two of you fighting wouldn't know who is right or wrong. They would think all of you are just like that. So you heard that story when a madman decided to take your clothes when you are bidding. And then you decided to come out from the washroom and follow the madman who have something hanging around them. Then obviously anybody who look at you say you are more mad than anybody else. So that is what we're talking about. It is so very important. And somebody who can follow instructions and ask for clarification. There are people who say, I think, I thought. After you have wasted so much precious time, and if you're a medical doctor, you would have killed the patient by that. It is not right. You need to be able to follow instructions. And this is what employers will put together. And when they put these things together, then they give you some of the specific skills. Look at some of them. Driving. 
painting, drawing. You know, things that you probably say, mm, what is this? I'm dead setting accounting, banking. You know, that's the same. Me, I move money. Hey, if you can't move little things, you ain't going to move big things, right? Remember? So again, it goes on to talk about things that you can do. Can you imagine singing? Somebody who is multi-talented in gift with voice can stand in front of people to sing. And if you can sing in front of people, it is obvious that you can stand in front of people to talk. Timidity and ability is not a room for employers out there. They are not interested. There are people who will touch anywhere when they're talking, lack of confidence. He said, he said, what did he say? He said, or oh, hold somewhere that they're not supposed to hold when they are talking. When you are nervous, and those who run away from presentation because they don't want to speak, anytime in your team you have a speaker, the rest of you come there, he, he. And always, what you have done best is to, I concord, say, I concord, I agree. And never ask questions in class. And sometimes when your hand even goes up and the lecturer recognizes you, he says, it's okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> speak the English that you can speak right now and make the mistakes at the level 100. I'm telling you, it is so key and it's important because when you're able to do that, it will take you to a different level. Take you to a different level. It will take you to a different level. So look at other examples as well. Computer programming. Sport. Knitting. Sewing. Everything that you see here is so basic. I'm telling you, the more you get yourself engaged, it puts a different kind of persona on you. You add a value to yourself. Because that's your market. That's your market. Are we together? So, employers talk about being able to even maintain a car when you don't have some in your family. This vacation, you want to be a mechanic. Not because, and I know women mechanic. I have a good friend, Kama Group of Company, Dr. Ajekum. He has medical doctors as children and pharmacists as a, he himself a pharmacist a long time ago. And he said all his children, he really got them to learn hairdressing, including the guys. His medical doctor who works in Kualibu now, he do makeup for women for a living, apart from the medical. Not only that, almost all the women, the daughters, any you know, of them know how to fix the car. Basic thing, changing the plugs, changing the oil, changing the filter, because they learned it. Three good moms, he will go and pay for you to learn it. They know how to sew. You see, all these things are important. They makes a difference between you and somebody else out there. And that is really the end product. Everything that we're doing together, remember, when you are called for a job interview, you stand out because you actually went to Gimpa Business School. It's a big name. But we cannot live on a past glory. Because it's the individuals who make it happen. And unfortunately, some of these individuals, you need a chamber and whole room for improvement. Because some of you, the character ain't good. Some of you, the attitude stinks. Some of you, trust me, you have no purpose for being here because you don't even know why you are here yourself. And it's a fact. And somebody has to look at you in your face and tell you. Because for your parents, they think they are doing you a favor. They're paying for your fees. They're paying for your accommodation. But many of you know that when you get to campus, different things happen. Their priority doesn't become your priority. So how do you prioritize yourself for you to get to the top and for you to excel and for you to be on top? So if this in interview is being organized and somebody from somewhere even comes, trust me, you're still going to be the only person who takes the job. That should be your mandate. Start from level 100. Don't think you have plenty of time. Four years come so very quick. I'm telling you. By the time you know you're graduating. But before you get there, remember where we started. When preparation meets opportunity, success is inevitable. So if it's a story that I was telling you, probably I should have mentioned it earlier on. That would be a story of a man who was very short. You remember that man who was very short? Those of you are Bible students. What is the man? Somebody said Colonius. I said, hey, <laughs> madam. Zacchaeus, when he wanted to see Jesus, what did he do? Oh, reverse that back. If he did not know how to climb a tree, how would he have got himself on top of the tree? So the time for you to learn how to climb a tree is now. Because you never know when on top of a tree will not only get you to see Jesus for Jesus to recognize you, but Jesus spending a night in your house. When preparation means opportunity. Your moment is now. Your moment is now. Are we together? So these are key. Because any job that is advertised, they actually look at certain skills, 
skills that they're looking for. So if you do have that skills, then you apply. Many a times, you know, and we have put it all together. So let's go together. The first one says what? The second one? Next? 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 And we need that as a basis of emphasis. Some of it I've already mentioned it. Ability to solve problems, not to run. It's the same as thinking on your feet. Somebody will see it and say, oh, I'll throw in the towel. This one is not me. Hey, this is too big. Hey, say, this one is your top level. If you cannot learn to solve problems, then of course, no organization will need you. Because everywhere around, and to our brother who want to be an entrepreneur, finest, what you actually survive and thinking have to do be being able to find creative solutions to problems. And when you do that, you have money in your pocket. People who go out, they're seeking to get money as entrepreneurs feel. But those who solve problems, money follows them. And that is the principle. That is the principle that helps. Technology, different level. How are you going to use it and turn it around? In a corporate environment, people able to type at least 40 words per minute. How fast can you type? Right in this, your environment, some of you are very good. But maybe your parents are not fortunate. So you do not have money. But you borrow people's laptop for you to watch series. <laughs> to watch movies. Some will borrow the same laptop, but learn how to type by using maybe bacon and the rest of them. So they can close their eyes and type 40 words per minute. Some their nails alone cannot give you the opportunity for pressing. You are doing yourself disservice. Because employer out there is looking for certain skills. And if you are not within, trust me, sometimes and many times, some powers can even push you there. But you will push yourself out. And many of you will finish when you are not adequately prepared. And most of this preparation are not preparation that is done in the classroom. Notes, reproduce, Get a first class because I've seen first class students who are dumb before. In our educational system in Ghana, you only become a first class student if you can chew a lot of things and put it in your head and reproduce it back to your lecturers. Finish. Especially a first degree. That is what it is. So, very students, when you put them together and give them problems to solve, they have no idea. When they come to corporate environment, you want them to carry on a tax, they don't understand it. Because everything has to be written, they cramped it. They push it there. The lecturer is happy because the marking scheme has taken it. But that is how preparation inadequate can be. So now we're going through one after the other. Let's look at some of them as well. Let's go together. What else is also necessary? Somebody who is what? Lawyer. And what? Committed. That's what I call it. Committed. Are you committed? Somebody walking into Gimpa. That have lectures at 8 o'clock, 7.30, you can see the person, the way they walk. They are committed. And I've seen some of them, even the way they walk on campus tell you they have nowhere they're going. You could waste their time forever. The way they will even do the abasa, and then they walk like that. Oh, what is happening? Oh, it's boring, the lecturer. I don't even want to go. Right? <laughs> and if you see purposefully lady walking, the way you walk, even if you want to talk to them, they turn and say, oh, it's okay. Purpose. Purpose. Some have to be called. Especially some of the day students, I've seen that the class rep have to go around calling some of them that the lecturer is in. Disaster. Are you committed? Bro, you know it's true, right? I like that. I like honesty. Loyalty. Typical of us as Ghanaian, people can lie to you, and when they are looking at you straight in the eye, you know, you know they are lying. Just look at you. Why, why are you late? Sir, you don't want to know. <laughs> Sir, I've been coughing blood. <laughs> the letter says, go, go and sit down. Go and sit down. You don't want to cough blood right now. Go sit down. It's terrible. You know? So that take us on to something. We look at what we call honesty and what? Integrity integrity. You know that most of you can be very honest. Even most Christians are very honest by integrity wise. Nope. Let me just explain the two for you to understand. You know, when you are honest, did you take the food? Yes, I did. You're honest. When it comes to integrity, integrity expands. 
integrity allows you, would you be able to come to the program today? Yes, sir, I'll be there. And the time comes, you don't show up. Can you be dependent on? So most of us are not dependable. When people cannot depend on you, that since one thing that you need to get yourself organized is important. Can people depend on you? When you say you will be there, would you be there? When you do it constantly, it becomes part of your hallmark. Let me tell you an incident that happened. I think it was Monday. I have to go to GTV with some of the Kofor scholars. They're waiting for me at University of Ghana. I set my alarm to wake up at 5 o'clock so that I can pick them 5.30. They got there 5 o'clock waiting for me. No, none of them will call. 5.30. None of them call. 6 o'clock. The phone rang. I pick up. I said, Hey, have I all my clothes? No shower. I said, hey. The guy who called among all of them is called Caesar. I said, Caesar, why are you calling me now? He said, dog, this is all like you. We've been here. We know you were coming, you were coming. It's 6 o'clock, you are not here. I overslept. They didn't believe it's possible for me to also sleep and forget myself. But of course, I'm human. It happens. But because they know for sure, when I say I'm leaving at this point, at this time, I will be there and I will leave you if you are late. They know that for sure. Can people rely on you? Can they take your word seriously? Or your yes is your no and your no is your yes. Can you be dependent on? Can your parents trust you? Can your colleagues trust you? And this is where it becomes very serious, integrity-wise. Because remember, some of you become president of this country. Start thinking like that. And that's why some of you need to change the way you dress. You know, I'm seeing some of you level 100. You're not dressing good at all. Dress well. You dress like as if, dress well, dress well. I was at the University of uh, yes, KNUST. You know, dog, you'll be surprised. All the level 100 for business school, they wear black and blue. They have uniform. Yes, and I, I was asking them, I was asking them, uh, you are what? Uh, what do you work? He said, no, 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 I'm a student. A student. I said, level 100? He said, yes, with a nice skirt. And he looks so lovely and cooperative. <laughs> You know, you are put out of that. You know, it's important, guys. Because you see, one thing you forget is that, and those of you wait t shirt to come here, stop. Stop. It's convenient, but it's not. Those of you don't take shower coming here to stop. <laughs> because I tell you what is so key. And I know some of you could listen to me and make a reformation. It helps. I'm telling you what happens. Some of you one day will become the president of this country. And when you do, you're going back to your class level 100 to pick those people who actually were different and nice and corporate. Question is, you ask yourself, will they come for you? Will you be the one the person will come for? Think about it. So integrity, honesty is a key. Enthusiasm. Some people are so dry. They are, in fact, every part of them is boring. Talking to them, boring. You can look at their face and you know they are bored to death. Are we together? That is even serious. Everything is negative around them. No enthusiasm, no energy. This is the time you give the oomph. You know that thing in you? Fabrancy. When a young person will do things, you do it with energy, precision. This is what we're looking for. We need that thing. And of course, it builds out from comfy, right? Reliability and punctuality. Would you be there when you say you'll be there? Personal presentation. Could you stand in front of people and present? In corporate environment, any opportunity you get is presented. In your class, any time you ask a question, it's a form of presentation. Think about it. Some of you know you will change your class rep if you have what it takes to do so. <laughs> because many a times, you see, it stems from how we actually select even leaders. And it's the truth. Because, you see, we say, oh, this guy there, he never really disagree. He's very good now. Oh, very nice looking. Oh, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they will vote the person. Your class will be there some. But you know definitely you're not getting the best out from your class rep. That is how it happens. It is so key. Personal presentation. Start asking questions in class. When you don't understand, ask it apologetically. And that is very important. This is what I call the cultural sensitivity. Don't just go on and show arrogant and stubborn. Some of you, you know, at this your level 100, you can be allowed yourself to be embarrassed. Take that for me. Some of you are too guy for no reason. 
you, some of you to your parents that didn't even have who? You come over here and I see if you stay on thousands and millions. Anything you say about them, they take offense. Especially when they date somebody in the class. But that one take advice from me. We don't, you don't chop chicken in the house. Chicken in the house, we don't chop it for a very good reason. Very important. If you are cocoa, you don't chop them. You grow them. Find a way. Okay, so let me have your attention, guys. So it is so very important for you to understand. Are we together? Are we together? Are we? Okay, good. So it is a key. Ask questions. When the lecturer embarrasses you, ask again. Let people note you for somebody who asks questions. Before you go for the lecture, prepare one question you're going to ask before you go. Some of you have been quiet for nobody's like it. Timidity and over apologetic. So the day that one TV station will put the camera, God, in fact, we beg you, whatever English you speak, don't say you come from Gimpa Business School. <laughs> Are we together on that point? It's a key. Very common sense. What we say is common. All right? What is your mind telling you? What are you doing? I go, yeah, master, stop the discussion and f- follow here. Follow here. <laughs> Paying attention is part of the things I'm talking about. Pay attention. When you finish, you, make your, you do your discussions. Positive self-image. I don't know. If I have enough time, I can talk about this the whole day. Positive self-image. How you keep yourself. Very important. Some people, when they walk, they command respect. When you see them, even if you're a lecturer and you want to disrespect them, you think again. But there are some people, when you see them, your mouth is saying you insult them because they are just finished. <laughs> I was doing orientation for national service persons somewhere in Tema. And I, one of the ladies asked me, Doc, but you are actually taking us through this. I like it. But let me say for a while, there are some people, they send them just like that because they are national service persons. They just send them. And there are some people, I don't know. So, so why should organizations do that, sending people just like that? I said, Madam, there are some people, as soon as you see their face, you will send them. <laughs> you come there and they are there. <laughs> Charlie, let's talk. My boss no day. Hey, me. Hey, he said, hey. And Kwasiaki can like that. <laughs> Such a person, you don't, you send them to go and buy roasted plantain. Don't ask them to add a granite to it. When they bring the plantain, you say, go get granite. When they bring the granite, you say, go and polish it. I like the polished one. You send them by heart. There are people, when you see them, the way they are focused, they are typing. Just say, oh, excuse me. Uh, say, how can I help, sir? Oh, I can see you are busy. Go ahead. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do you carry that kind of respect? Again, when you walk out there and somebody even stop a car to talk to you and the person said, it's all right, check your face. There's something in your face that doesn't look good. <laughs> Some of you walk without checking your face. Some of you chew gum without even looking at the mirror before. Go and check it. <laughs> Some walk on the roadside thinking nobody is watching you, but people are seeing you. You drive and see people. You actually stop to give them a lift. Some people, you see them and you just drive off. Check your face. It doesn't come naturally. Some of you, because of poverty, your faces are not jay up to be more appealing, but you can force it. Everybody have a unique beauty when there's a smile on your face. Some of you are too serious. And you are so not even making a first class. What is this seriousness about? <laughs> and some of you have too many issues in your mind, and the mind is what projects the face. But say to yourself, I'm walking on this roadside with that confidence. Some of the ladies need to also learn how to walk. Some secondary school, they teach people how to walk. I've been on this campus. When I see people walking about, I know for sure what school they went to. And I've seen some of the first level 100 people also walking around. I'll tell you what I enjoy most when they are doing matriculation in the universities. I'll tell you, I've seen some because, I, in fact, I then I'm going to various universities. Some of them was the first time they were wearing the heat. So I can see <laughs> But of course, if somebody should teach you how to walk in this mode and walk it very well, it's part of precision. Now, some of you have mastered it. If you haven't mastered it, watch other people. Some of you will stand and you stretch your legs like this. It's not right. I've seen people, their hands will be in their nose, taking their head. When you finish, they want to greet you. I've seen people, when you are walking behind them, they go and speak like that. Ah, how it's embarrassed. 
How embarrassment is that? So these are things you need to watch. I've seen guys who will stand anywhere and just urinate. And I've seen some ladies who even join that as well. And I've seen some who will go to the loo and when they do, they don't even flash. Spitting and all that. It's not nice. And I've seen those who go and eat food and you see them even at the corridors around you covering the toothpick. <laughs> what is all this? And I've seen people who have worn a hair. They put it on for too long that sometimes you can see that the natural hair and the artificial one are fighting together. It's not right. That is not a ladylike, nor a gentleman like this. Well, and I've seen people who take a pen like this. Where is the pen? And you see them. Sometimes too. There are certain things you just don't do. It's not just right. It's just not right. Just not right. So, what is your? You have a set positive self esteem. Are you able to stand up, defend yourself? Let's finish up with this one. Then the next one is what? Somebody who you have what? What is the meaning of that? Somebody who have a sense of humor. Yeah. Anyone? Somebody who mm, take joke. Yeah. Certain things. It's not about all life and death, right? Yeah, I'm here. Something's coming, so I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, there are some people when you are even saying something that is funny, they never laugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have issues. People like that, you will probably die before your natural death. <laughs> You're too serious for everything, and every day when people see your eyes so red, either it's trauma or weed, nobody knows. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> have enough sleep. <laughs> have enough sleep. <laughs> some of you don't know what you do in the night. Have enough sleep. I'll tell you what is so alarming. It has been proven that if he can go to bed two hours before midnight, it's far better than four hours after midnight. So some of you need to readjust yourself. You went through confidence, right? Part of showing confidence and, and, and assertiveness is for you to get yourself so organized in the sense that you can go to bed by 10. I'm telling you, start practicing that. You'll be amazed. Everything that the lecturer will teach you will get in there. Very important. But if you sleep late, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how long you sleep in the morning, it's still not effective. It's like a magic. Say it right. Get that organization. You'll be surprised. So that when people are laughing, you can laugh some. You know, sometimes people take life too serious. You know, sometimes know when to laugh. Come on. You know, it's very important. And the next one, let's go together. It says what? Very important. Very important. You need to be able to balance it. Okay? And this is part of the organization as well. Because it helps you to know what needs to be done at home. When it's a homework, go and do it at home. We love that. And again, and again, ability to deal with what? Pressure. Can you deal with that in a corporate environment? Everything is pressure. You are being called at the same time and you have a task to accomplish at the same time. Effective and efficiency is a key. It's a hallmark of a discipline of somebody who knows what time it is. Are you that kind? Very, very important. Motivation. Some always receive, but they never give. Make it as part of your duty to compliment those people who dress nice when you see them. But to start with, know what about you that make you look cool. If God has blessed you over here and it's plenty, show it. If you have watermelon, if you also have an apple, show it. <laughs> Whatever God has blessed you to be, it is part of where it starts from. But when you see anything that worth you complimenting, please compliment. It's very important. I like your hairstyle. I like how this looks today. I like your tie. Nobody's wearing a tie. Level 100. T-shirts. I like your T-shirts. I don't like the T-shirts. Some of the things that's written in there. But I don't tell them if you don't like it. But appreciate something. But if you're a friend, look at them and tell them. Do you know that some of you men could make some of the men dress corporately and executive all the time? Mm -hmm. yes. The day that they bring it, say, I, I just like it when you, please, can you dress like that for me? And if I ask you right now to look at the guys over here, you see the way you have been seated, ladies over here, guys over here, I don't even know how you define that. Look, if I ask you ladies to share with me, what kind of dress over here that we, you want us to? Or which of them would you want to wear them another cloth? You probably would say. And then I ask the guys to also look at over here and tell me what appeals to your eyes. 
You also will tell me a few things, right? So it's important and it's also very necessary. Very, very important and necessary. Motivate people and encourage them because when you do that, trust me, the more you are burdened and you share other people's burden, your burden vanish. Take that from me. So to those of you who hardly with me express any gratitude, please, this is a time for you to do that. It is not after all, all that bad. There are certain people who have helped you. Some taught you what is a muck before you knew what you were drinking. When you used to lick your hand when you were growing up, it's somebody who even helped you. So part of this presentation, as you are going through, some of you after here need to take your phone and thank somebody you have refused to thank. Write the unwritten letter. Send a text message that you should have sent a long time ago. You have been ungrateful. Some of your senior high school lecturers who help you, you know that. How stubborn you were. Some of you, how they really have to really bed them so that at least you won't do, some of you would, you would have been losing out and losing off. But it took somebody's intervention for you to be here. Somebody even prayed for you. Are you aware of that? Some of you need to go back to your parents and thank them for that. That's when this motivation comes in. You need to be a people who show gratitude. When somebody even uses a bit of time, you get in a generation that is so bad. People open door for you. People don't say thank you. People pull chairs and people think that you are responsible. Who said that? Appreciate people when they do something less. Thank you for accompanying me for lunch. I'm very grateful. Though you did not buy for me, I'm happy. <laughs> when you say, I'm going for lunch. Can I go with you? Oh, be, I don't want you to come because when you go, you go and sit down. I want you to go and buy. You know, people are so looking for so much big things that they forget the little things you need to show appreciation. I love when people approach a lecturer and say, sir, you have blessed my heart. I told something people. At the University of Ghana, when I was actually, number of students, but there was a young lady who actually profoundly gave me a chocolate. When she dropped the chocolate, I couldn't recognize her. When I came back, I was trying to announce it so that I can get a person. When I saw the person, he says, sir, you don't have to thank me. It's a little appreciation I can do in the mix of many. When I took the person's script and I was marking, to be very honest with you, I made sure that the grades she deserved, I gave it to her. I wasn't lazy in marking her script. Especially when students say, you say, I understand your topic, but this side I don't. Can I come for you to explain that bit after lectures? I'll be more than happy. I like this course. Trust me, you own it as a responsibility not to fill that person because you know that person is depending on you. Level 100, this is the things. These are some of the things you actually need to know before you leave. Adaptability. So now, we're going to wrap it all up and then be able to share with you and then you can also share with me what are some of the things that now that you know what you didn't know before, you think is very important for us to pay attention to. Are we together? Are you together? So again, in a corporate environment, they ask you, do you have the ability to either learn or deliver? Can you demonstrate? So sometimes when I take people's CV and I'm looking at it and person say, I, 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 am a, I am an innovator. I am a critical thinker. <laughs> then I take the CV and said, um, Madam, what's your name? Adam. Madam Adam, on your CV, you said you are a critical thinker. Can you demonstrate to us where this critical thinking ability has actually manifested before in your lifetime, whether in school or at workplace? So Madam what? Critical, critical who? Think, think of what? You see, you yourself have actually dubbed the word and put it there. You have no idea what it means. Are we together? You see, words like hard working. That is called trite. Trite is words that is abuse, used and overused. Everybody uses it, so you want to use it. No. Employers are not interested in that at all. So again, it's important. Can you demonstrate? These days, when you say you are good in Excel, word, they give you the computer and say, type it and let's see now. 40 words per minute. Can you type like that? Do you know Excel, Word, or PowerPoint? Which of them are you good at? Excel, Word, PowerPoint. Word. word. You're good in Word. Okay, good. All right. So when you are using Word, are you here with me? When you are using Word, how would you be able to freeze a panel? Talk me through. Mm -hmm. 
you, you come in, right? You're good in word. Very good. You're very good in word, right? You're good. Okay. Okay. So how would you be able to create complementary cars using word? When you open the word application, okay. Uh, uh, uh -huh. You could get. So that's how far you can go. Where do you live? You, yes. Aguba, take us to your house right now. Give us a description to your house. How do we get there? Take us home with you. From here. Yes, let's go. No, we are here. So take us to your house. Where do we go? How do we get there? You order an Uber to take you. You see? You, 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 you see? You see? Okay, so it becomes necessary and important. Very necessary and important. So employers will look for all this and employers will embrace that. Okay? So initiative, people who can take time, and then it's also important for you to do that. You action it, your outcome, and of course, situation, action, and outcome. These are very critical what employers are looking for. So the question to us is that, look, what do I wish I really knew? This is where we share. I want you to be able to tell me. Now that you know what you know right now, of course, it is necessary for you to compulsively do an internship, even if Gimpa doesn't ask you to do so. It is also very necessary for you to have a passport, even if you decide not to travel. It is necessary for you to learn how to drive and have a valid driver's license. It is also very necessary for you to be able to speak more than one language. And here, let me just quickly add. When you ask people what language you speak, Ewe, Gan, or Chi, there are any languages, you know. They call it dialect, for better way, they say vernacular. You need to be able to embrace yourself with another language. Preferably French. There are more Francophones than Anglophones. All right? You know Anglophone and Francophone. If there's a single person from Francophone. What do we, how do we call the person? How do we call the person? It's called Francophile. And the person from Anglophone, we say Anglophile. That's a single person. You need to be able to at least be multi langua or by langua. It's important, especially if you are hoping to work for any international communities in Israel. Also, anything happening in Ghana, the borders are around. Are you aware that there are more Francophones in West Africa than Anglophones? There are more French-speaking countries around us in West Africa than those who speak English. Most of them who speak French have advantage of speaking French. Speaking English, sorry. Yeah? Those who speak French, they have advantage of speaking what? English. But most of us who speak English, hardly. How many of you speak French in this room? No one. It's about time to think at level 100. Level 100, think about it. We say at level 100, master your escalator speech. Precise description of yourself to somebody who is seeing you for the first time. So when a person speaks to you, there's a mark. Some of you talk to you, there's no remembrance. You forget because you meet too many people. Master your escalator speech. Precise description to yourself. I'm Adam, level 100 business student from Gimpa. Say, I actually, something that is positive. Something somebody really need to hold on to that. That is what we so need for. We need that. Master that. And sometimes you need to rehearse it before you meet people. How do you present yourself when you meet people? It is so very necessary and important. Gentlemen, come over here. Shake my hand. How are you? I like that. Take your hand from your back. You're not a slave. You're a human being. 
So shake my hand again. I like that. You look at me in my eyes. And I like it. When you shake people, you need to fold their palm. And that is exactly what he does. There's no pressure, squeezing, nothing. But you see, he looked at me straight because he went like that. How are you doing? And it has been proving that there is something called dominant eye. When you see somebody for the first time and the person shake your hand and their two eyes go straight onto your right eye, there's instant likeness for the person and yourself. Because God has given us two eyes, but it's only one of the eyes that is able to retain image. You can look at what is behind you for a long time, and when you close your eyes, it's only one of the eyes. And research says that it's the right eye that is able to retain the image. And that is why sometimes when people introduce themselves to you, when they are even going, you feel like, don't go. Talk to me more. I want to know more. It's all part of what salespeople use as a technique for them to sell things across. It is so necessary to be able to improve your persona, your personality. That is very important. The only thing you need to do in addition, this looks nice, but you could trim it a little bit and make it look sharp. That is what is very important. And don't do that. When you people don't understand, don't go and greet people and start doing this. What is all that? This, it's not formal, it's not official. If it's colloquially, you can do that. But it's important. And that is exactly what I want. Sit down for me. That is really cool. That is very cool. So master your escalator speech. Precise description about yourself. Everybody in this room have what we call a bragging right. Bragging right. You all have that. And I'll tell you why it's so important. Why it's important is that I can tell you I move people around. Very important people for very important tasks. I'm the one who moved them around. That is far better than saying I'm a driver. Are you following? Yeah. What is your bargain? What is your bragging right to you? What is precise description of yourself that will make somebody be interested? Level 100. When you have opportunity to introduce yourself, what do you say? This is critical. This is very critical. And learn how to write a killer letter. When you are not happy, find a nice way to talk to somebody. That is what we say, writing a killer letter. Letter. Saying something that is not palatable to someone that a person might take offense, but say it anyhow assertively. And that is what you learn the assertiveness. How do you get that message across? It's important and important, important for you to embrace your comfy. Comfy is a word for your century. If you are not confident, forget it. If you are not confident, you cannot establish any company. You are not confident you can't go for a job interview and get it right. You are not confident you cannot even approach people at the corridor for them to even show interest in you. Confi is what takes you. And confidence carry you through the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you express yourself. Every aspect is comfy. That's the word. And that is what I encourage most of you to start embracing. Learn how to boost your confidence level. Because you were not born naturally for you to be confident. Not at all. But you need to work seriously how you walk, how you talk, how you throw your hands, how you even speak your lips, the way it moves, how you carry yourself. All that is aspect of confidence. I love to see a level 100 student, and I've seen it before. When I finished presenting, he came and said, Sir, this is my complimentary card. Can we keep in touch? Wow! I couldn't hesitate. I picked up my complimentary card and I gave it to the person. I said, you were a serious student. Complimentary card is core card. Who do you have a call card that you give? Someone doing me, I don't have a business. Who said it's a call card? It's not all the time you see people at the corridor. A zero two. What is zero two? <laughs> it's not professional. So you could actually embrace somebody who knows where they are going. You can tell around them, and that is why you need to also choose friends carefully. This part of it, what you need to know, level 100, is that you can fall in love with somebody, but the person necessary might not be your husband. Know that from level 100. Level 100, know that somebody can have sex with you and get you pregnant, but that person is not mandated to be your husband. Level 100, somebody can break your heart and they don't care. Level 100, and it should not affect your studies. Level 100, that is what you wish you know. You wish to know that there are people that you call friends now, you can drop them like hot potatoes and get a sensible friend. Because you need to know yourself. If you are stupid, never get a stupid person as a friend. <laughs> know yourself and opt for who become part of you. You assess yourself and know who can balance it off. Yeah? But you are poor. Your friend is poor. Too poverty is sickness. Doesn't balance off at all. And these are all level 100. What do you wish you embrace? Very tactical and diplomacy, level 100. When a lady speaks, speak like a lady. Say, I think I did not understand. Some of them asked a question in class. I remember they said that uh, 
said, do, 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 don't you think? When you ask me such a question, you, 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 what is that? Don't you think? Translate that to chi. Translate that to ewe. Translate that to... to, to, to uh, it's insultive. It's insultive to ask your lecturer that. And when anybody wants to ask a question, I think, I, I think it, it just it depreciates. It, it just it reduces the value of what you're saying. Level 100, speak with tightness. You have a lot of things around you. Get the English language correct and speak them with authority. Let people know that you are asking a question. Because that is any time you stand, it's a presentation of a kind. How come when somebody says, I need somebody who is vocal in your class, somebody who is confident, you will be pointing and pointing people. Why are people not pointing you? <laughs> so level 100, just remember those things. Whatever you do, remember it is just the beginning, but it's not your destiny. And for beginning, it can be rough. Also understand that you might not understand all the things that you're being taught over here, but you can ask for clarification if possible. You can even fail exams, but it's not the end. Your boyfriend can break up with you, but that is not the end of your life. It's still the journey of level 100. Your parents might even reject you. It's part of the process. Finances might not come the way you want it, you might not be able to dress and walk the way you want at level 100. But remember, it's also part of the journey. It's a process. It's not a destination. Some lecturers will like you. Some will not like you. For whatever reason, remember, they cannot define your destiny. When I pick a CV, I look at people who are serious and it shows from level 100. You know, at first, level 100, we did not grade you, right? You, you can level 100, you don't grade. Your grade, grade average point doesn't start from level 100. But now they grade you from 100, right? It means that everything that you do matters. Don't wait for university to give you a letter. You don't need it. Write a letter, get somebody to give you a reference, attach it to it, and say, I live close by. I say, during this vacation, I just want to come to the office. Send me anywhere you want to send me. When you go there, as tiny and young as you are, you could still be a virgin, which you probably don't look like you are. But even if you are, whatever it is, you go there and people who are older twice as your father will ask you out. You know how to be able to delete that lane and go through. It builds your confidence up because you know the corporate environment. When you come to the class and the lecturer is teaching examples, you will be more instructive because you have been there. You can add to it. And it's important. So start from level 100. And I've said a lot of things that you could also have to start from now. Learn how to even swim. Learn one vocational job. Something that you can do. It's all start from here. I know people who actually have tailor at University of Ghana. They teach people. They take about five people. Every semester they teach them how to. So, and take some small money from them. Yes, bro. I'm Wilson Dennis. Dennis, right. Yeah, Wilson. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Hard. I like that. So it is important. It's very, very important. Let's give me a big clap. Yes. Let's go. Shika, did we give you a clap? Oh, let's give you a big clap. Thank you. Anybody else? This is a, yes, please. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Contribution. Very important. Brand yourself. You. You are a product of a kind. Let people miss you when you are not in class. But for people to miss your absence, it means your presence must be impactful. Think about that. There are some you are just passing through like passengers. If semester comes and go and you do not even come to class, the truth of the matter is that you will not be remembered for anything. God forbid, when you die, they find it difficult to even describe who is dead. <laughs> People like that, when you are in it, it's not full. When you are out of it, it's not empty. Such a death is a disastrous death. And my greatest portion for anybody Anybody in this room, the level hundreds, just remember this carefully. I pray to God never for your life to be cut short. Amen. Amen. And if you ever want to die, please, die very quickly. <laughs> because don't waste your parents' resources. Level 200. 
Level 300. Level 400. And when you have been posted, you are going to do your national service. Say you are dying. You don't die. You cannot. You refuse to die. So now that you are surviving and have survived at least first semester of level 100, I'm telling you, know that your lifespan on earth is greater. But your preparation must be adequate for you to miss the tax. And that is my greatest portion, what I wish for all of you. Don't take the now for granted. Don't let nobody waste your time. That is why you cannot go on recklessly living a life as if you are giving up. No. There's better future to come. What you do now will definitely have a profound on what? The future. And that is why you just be mindful now. Prepare yourself adequately. Hold yourself in integrity. Let people see you with value. And those values, when they come, I'm telling you, nobody can stop you. And that is why when you are employing an organization, when you say you are not coming, they miss you to death. That's critical. If you're able to do all that I've said, you are what? An average person. Employers are not looking for people who will be average. If you have what it takes, don't be an average person. When they say, I'm here to exceed expectations. Isn't that beautiful? Those who are there to meet expectation, nobody's interested. That's why employers are looking for people who can exceed expectation. I ask for more and you have given me two or three. I appreciate that. That is what I'm looking for. There has to be something about you that is different. Finest Gimpa Business School. Great name. But the product, add value to yourself. Because that's what will make the difference. One, recognize that you need help. That is where it starts. Recognize that you, what? you need help. Get yourself organized. Embrace your studies from beginning. Don't wait until exams is here to come. Some of you, I don't know whether you have been paid to walk around. You walk on campus too by heart. <laughs> sit down and study. You will see them here today. Here, there. You wonder why they even go for lectures. <laughs> it is so necessary and it's important for you to get yourself composed. And when you are walking out there, walk with precision, as I've said. A lady walk with, have a destination where you are going. It's very important. And let your friends be able to do that. A gentleman, do the same. And take every moment you come to class as maybe your last. Because when you do that, the way you carry yourself is distinction. And that is important. Because you never know when your gentleman like will be tested and your ladylike will be subject to scrutiny. So it is important, very important. Madam Yellow, say something. You will take the last one. Yellow, yes. Add, go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a good point. You know, that is not my main topic today. That's why I didn't draw in that, all right? But the, the, the thing is that by the time you graduate, two streams that you have, some of you will want to be able to work for themselves. They want to become employers. Some of you will work for organization. You are an employee. Some of you will find yourself in a corporate environment. Significantly, you can be impactful. You actually become intrapreneurship. We have extrapreneurship is still within the context. Somebody in a bigger organization who come out with an idea and the company said, we don't need you, and then you ought out to set up your own business. So instrumentally, you can re-innovate, rejuvenate. You can put energy in organization that you can turn your status from an employee to become an employer or a shareholder. That is also part of it. So again, it's all part of the discipline preparation that you do at level 100. You have options, plenty of them. Some of you will do your national service and after national service, get married. Some of you might get married before your national service. Some of you likely probably will get pregnant. Whichever way you decide to go, remember, the future is brighter than now. But before you can get to that future, you need to make adequate preparation for the now. And that is what has caused for this. Are we together? Yeah. So let me just finish up with that story. He's a young guy. He sat in a church and the pastor was preaching. A pastor has chosen to speak on the topic, impossibility of God. She saw a young man who came over there. That young man was actually whispering. And the word that was running through his teeth is Tokyo. 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 The pastor watched it with eagerness. When the sermon was over, 
He was greeting people. But when he got to that young man, he looked at him in the eye and said, boy, you were praying for that city, Tokyo. I've not heard any reports bad of its nature. Why? He said, Pastor, you read my lips. The pastor said, I didn't read your lips. You were actually speaking loud enough. Everybody could hear you. And everything that you were saying is Tokyo. What is wrong? He said, Pastor, you were right. Double right. Because yesterday in my geography exams, one question I'm supposed to pass. What is the capital town of France? Pastor, I chose Tokyo. <laughs> Today, I came to this church with a burden on my heart. And I'm only asking God to do me a big favor. And I'm consoled because you have also chosen to speak on the topic impossibility of God. God can do everything. This is just minute, little. So all I'm asking God to do in his own wisdom and ability to change the capital town of France <laughs> to Tokyo for me. And when he has finished doing that, my lecturer should mark me. And when I'm checked, whatever God decides to do with it, it's not a bother to me. The pastor looked at the young boy. He remembered the scriptures he has quoted in the sermon. He got out all the confidence. He said, boy, you will pray that kingdom come. God ain't going to change the capital town of France to Tokyo. You have to go and rewrite the paper. When you do, remember, the capital town of France is not Tokyo. The boy was disappointed. So to you at level 100, God will do his part. The quotation we gave before. You need to do your part. And your part is this preparation and many things you might have to embrace yourself before you graduate. And if you're able to take half of this thing that we've spoken about right now, I'm telling you, you will have no regret by the time you get to 400. And even at level 200, people will be talking to you and think that, look, you are a level 400 person. And by the time you get to 400, people will actually think that you're a master student. It is in your hands. Nobody will do it but you. Remember, the base is important. But if we miss the base, then we can never catch up with the pace. I wish you all the best and thank you very much. Thank you.